This is Dan Larson from McAfee, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to encrypt a USB stick using McAfee's file and removable media protection. The first thing we need to do is check and make sure that our system has the product installed. So in this case, we're looking for file and removable media protection. Uh, it is installed, and I can see that we're working with version 4.3. The next thing we need to do is make sure that we have keys set up to perform the operations. So I'm going to go to Menu and then choose FRP Keys. And the one that I'm interested in right now is called User Personal Keys. This is the most popular option that we have for setting up a recovery key in case the end user forgets the password that they set up for their USB stick. So I'm just checking here to make sure that this feature is enabled, uh, and it is. So what we need to do now is put this key to use in a policy. So I'll go to the Policy Catalog. I'll make sure that we've got file and removable media protection uh, picked in the first drop down. And then I'm going to filter this list so that I'm just looking at the removable media portion of the policy. Now, setting up the policy is actually very straightforward. I'll just click on the My Default policy. And I've got a few options up here uh, that will allow me to set what kind of removable media encryption uh, that I want to use in my environment. Uh, the first option here, unprotected access. Uh, just means to basically do no encryption. Uh, in fact, don't provide any protection at all. Just log what goes to and from the USB stick. So uh, this is a nice feature. Uh, if you're just rolling out the product, you're just getting started, uh, and you're a little nervous about turning on the protection, um, this allows you to just get visibility into your environment. And a lot of people do start out with this uh, as a first step to working with the product. The next thing you can do is actually allow the end user to do uh, USB encryption. Uh, the difference between allow and enforce is that the end user has the option to say no here. So in some environments uh, they they don't have the authority or they just don't want to require encryption. Um, so you can enable this option to get that outcome. And off-site access uh, means that the person could take the USB stick and plug it into a system not managed by your organization and still be able to read the data. So the next option is the one we're actually going to use uh, for this demo. And force encryption uh, means just that. The user does not have the option uh, to deny encryption. Uh, if, they, if they refuse to encrypt, uh, then the device will be made read-only, so they can't copy any data to it. And typically, people want the off-site access. They like the portability uh, of USB. So we're going to enforce the encryption and give them the option to use it off-site. Uh, just for comparison, if you do enforce encryption with on-site access, this will actually encrypt the data on the USB sticks with a key that's only available in your environment. So if you choose this option, uh, your end users won't be able to uh, take their removable media home or to a conference or to anywhere else uh, and unlock the data. So if you're really concerned with uh, data leakage and you want to prevent off-site access, then this is the option. And finally, if you want to, uh, you can use this endpoint agent to block write operations to all of your USB. So you can read the data uh, from it, but you can't write to it. So for this demo, we're going to move forward with the enforce encryption with offsite access option. So you can see in the bottom half of the screen here, we now have the configuration options uh, for this. And to take it just one piece at a time, uh, I'm going to click this tab. And I have a few options here. I can choose to encrypt the entire device, uh, which is popular. But if the devices are, are too big uh, or if they're over a certain size, this might take longer than you want. So it's very popular to instead use this user managed option. This is just a faster way to set up encryption on a USB device. And the rest of the options here are pretty self-explanatory. Um, most people just use passwords. Uh, if you're using smart cards, we support that certificate authentication. So I usually just set this to either. And then for recovery method, this is why we went and enabled that user personal key feature earlier. Uh, what this allows you to do if you're using user personal keys is if someone forgets their password for the USB stick, all they have to do to unlock the USB stick is plug it into a managed system and authenticate to Windows. It will then use that Windows-based authentication to unlock this personal key and allow you to make a new password for the USB stick. The next option uh, gives you the choice of uh, putting in a, a custom message to your end users. This is what they'll see 
uh, when a USB stick is uh, inserted into the system. So if you have uh, you know legal text or terms of use that you like to uh, use inside your organization, you can paste that here. And then we also give you the option to do exempted devices. So if you know there are certain kinds of devices that you don't want to encrypt in your environment, uh, you can add uh, those with unique identifiers here. So I'll hit save, and now my policy is set to enforce encryption. But the other thing I need to do is modify the grant keys policy. Uh, this will make sure that the user personal key is actually available to my end users. So I have to do this step or else the uh, recovery feature for removable media encryption uh, won't work. So I'll hit save here. And now that I've got those two components of the policy set, all I need to do is synchronize my endpoint with the EPO server so that it gets this new policy. So let's do that now. I will flip over to our test system. Click on the Mac V agent and I'll choose the option to check new policies. You can see that the agent finished enforcing those new policies. Uh, so now my system should prompt me to encrypt a USB stick the next time I plug one in. So let's go ahead and do that now. So to connect a removable media device, I'll go up here and I'll choose my Dell memory key. So I'll just close the status monitor here. And this is the prompt you get when you insert a removable media device. And you'll see here that I have the option to say no. So if I say no, uh, it tells me that it's read only. Because if you remember in the policy, we set it up to uh, enforce encryption. So if you refuse, uh, you simply won't be able to copy data to that drive. Uh, but in this case, I do want to encrypt that drive. So I'll just click OK here. And then I'm going to plug the device in again. So there we go. This time for the prompt, I'll say yes, I do want to encrypt the drive. And I've got a few options here. So I set it to user managed, which means I can enter a value here. And the only other thing I have to do is put in a password. And you can see here that we do enforce password complexity rules. Uh, these are configurable in the policy, but I'll just uh, make a better password. And then I'll click Initialize to proceed. So at this point, we're actually encrypting that removable media device. I'll click OK. And now I'll open Windows Explorer. And you can see that the USB drive has a lock icon on it. This indicates that it is encrypted. So let's go ahead. I'll make a file and I'll copy it in there. Here's my test document. Copy it to the drive. And you can see here that it has a lock icon, meaning that file is encrypted. So the next thing I'll do is I'll disconnect this from my managed system and I'll plug it into an unmanaged system. So this will simulate uh, an end user taking the device home or to any other system where McAfee is not managing that system. So I've disconnected it from my test system here. Now let's go out to my test window system and you can see that it has uh, the McAfee logo on it. And when I double click this, uh, I don't see any of the data and I won't be able to until I unlock it. And you unlock it uh, by running this program. This will run automatically if you have auto run enabled. So I'll run it. And I'll type in my password. And now that the device is unlocked, it's just like a normal uh, USB stick. I can copy the data to my desktop. I can open the file. Uh, and the encryption is totally seamless to me. Uh, as long as I unlocked the stick by entering a valid password. So that's it. In this video, you've seen the process uh, both for encrypting a USB stick uh, and from accessing that stick from another machine.